Welcome back, folks. I'm Z, and today we're taking a closer look at Rem. So let's take a look at her ability board. Ooh. There are only, I think, six abilities I'm missing. We have Brute Slayer, Fighting Spirit 4, Morning Star High Boost, No Attribute Attack Raise 2, Twin Maids, and then her skill, Don't You Dare Touch Him. And then moving on to look at the skills that I currently have. Of course, we have Horn of the Demon, which allows Rem to become a demonized unit. We'll go more in depth into that in just a little bit. But I've also added on every single HP skill that's accessible in the game for right now. Um, so HP up, um, HP up 2, 3, 4, and max. And then I also have um, every single attack up equipped on except the uh, base level attack up. Um, so 2, 3, 4, and max. And then her base kit of critical up two, three aim vitals. And then I added advanced aim vitals and proud force. And then her base kit with royal armor, auto brave. I added fast critical. There's auto haste, fury, awaken. I also gave her no attribute attack raise, which will stack with no attribute attack raise level two. She also comes with Blessed Speed, Hammer Boost, I added Hammer High Boost, and she has Close High Boost. I gave her Ultimate Boost, which will really power up her special even more. And then she also comes with Breaker, Rapid Recovery, and then I gave her Tempest Dragon's Blessing for the additional strength. And then she also gets the physical damage taken minus 15%. So let's compare attack and critical. The reason I'm doing that is you have to add every single attack skill for Rem. While she already comes with uh, critical up 2, critical up 3, and aim vitals. Now the reason I'm bringing this up is because not everyone is going to be able to bring Rem up to this SC count or skill count. I said count twice. <laughs> but yes, most people will probably stop at 50 and then wait to awaken her completely and then invest in her SC. So if you had to pick and choose whether to invest fully in attack and a little bit of crit or to go full crit and some attack... Now's the time to listen. So I actually did an experiment where I compared having every single attack uh, passive equipped onto Rem and only having her base kit of critical up 2, 3, and aim vitals. And so I took off advanced aim vitals and proud force. And then the second experiment, I took off all of the attack uh, passives and then I added critical up level one and then I added advanced aim vitals and proud force. Now ideally you can equip attack passives with the uh, critical up passives um, but not everyone is going to have the SC required for that. So if you had to pick and choose if you want more um, higher consistent damage without having to rely on criticals, then invest in attack. If you want to take those chances and go for a little more sustainability uh, as you recover HP with Proud Force and do um, like peaks in damage, then definitely go for the critical build. If you can do both, even better. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is her Horn of the Demon ability. Now the description says temporarily demonize unit, greatly recover HP, and recover one SCT use for each skill once per wave. So you can use Horn of the Demon once per wave. It 
there is a cooldown on it. I'm not sure how long the cooldown is. Um, and by cooldown, I mean once Ram uses Horn of the Demon, she is only in demon form temporarily. And once the wave ends, she goes back to her non-demon form. And you have to use her ability again. So once you use Horn of the Demon, you will immediately recover 9,999 HP. And your right after that, your HP will triple. So if you have 4,000 HP, that will triple to a flat 12,000. Now if you have as much as 9,000, that will easily become 27,000 HP. And I'll show you in a little bit what that's like. And the great thing about this ability too is that you will recover one skill point for each of your three skills, S1, S2, and S3. And when you are in demon form, I think you have a 25% increase in SCT as well. So your abilities will, or your skills will become more used, I guess. That's what you can say. You can use your skills more once you become demonized. So uh, when you triple your HP, you want to make sure that you have as many HP uh, passives and buffs that you can have on Rem. So that's why I have HP up, 2, 3, 4, and max on her. So she's going to get the maximum boost that you can give her in skills, but you can also buff her in battle using certain skills that you can get from an arc or maybe some characters already come with these kinds of skills. So you can use a skill like high vitality which will heal Rem but also increase her maximum HP by 2000. So where do you get this kind of skill? You can get this from an arc called the Apparition Gate Udalier. I don't think I pronounced that right, but th this is the arc that you get it from. So I think you have to upgrade the arc to either level 8 or level 9, and then High Vitality becomes a learnable skill. And yes, it does require 780 AP to learn the skill, but very worthwhile, especially um, if you plan on using it for REM because that 2,000 will easily triple her HP. And another skill that you can use if you don't have access to that is if you have Senku, he learns a skill called Doping Stamina. You'll heal your unit and then you will increase their HP limit by 2000. Basically the same thing as high vitality, except this is an exclusive skill to Senku. So if you don't have Senku, then you can use high vitality. Um, if you don't have either or, then hopefully by the time you're watching this video, Amelia is still accessible. And Thankfully, she has a passive that she can learn called Amelia's Soothing, where if she uses a magic skill to heal an ally, their HP cap will increase by 1000. So not as much as high vitality or doping stamina with Senku, but I mean, you still get 1000 uh, cap increase whenever you heal with her. Now, here's the great thing about this too, when I tested it, if you were to use Star Heal, of course, like let's say you use it on Rem, uh, Rem's max HP will increase by 1000 points, but if you use Healing Wind to heal your entire party, then all of your allies will increase their maximum HP by 1000. So, let's say I have... Um, Let's get an example here. Let's say I have these three characters. I have Claire, Ram, and Emilia. If I use Healing Wish, then Claire and Ram will increase their HP cap by 1000. 
So definitely recommend using these skills on RAM right before you enter demon mode so that way you can really maximize your ability to increase REM's HP threshold. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is Ram's equipment. So, I mean, I wailed for her and I went a little crazy, but that's how I was able to get her exclusive weapon and exclusive armor in the uh, trading space. So if you don't have access to these particular equipment and you're free to play, then some alternatives that you can use for her weapon are crazy impact. You can get this from the Hidden Paco Plains shop for 388,000 Zell and I'll show you where to get this later. Um, but yes, you have 109 strength, you get uh, plus 50% faint damage. Um, but uh, apparently this uh, faint damage is only effective on non-bosses. Um, and I'm getting this information from a post I saw on Reddit. Um, and there's a link that's called uh, Lake's Last Claudia Spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and post that in the description so you can all check it out. Um, but yes, the faint damage only applies to non-bosses. Now, if you uh, can't use the crazy impact or don't have access to it yet, then you can always use the quartz hammer gillian, gillian, gillian. Um, so you have the 99 strength increase, you have a 3% critical hit rate and 25% faint damage. Again, this is from the uh, Lake's Last Claudia spreadsheet. Um, unfortunately, this was a limited time um, hammer. You can only get this from the trading space when Bayland was first released. Now, if you don't have this weapon, the upgraded version of this would be the Ancient Hammer. And this is much later in the game, so if you aren't towards the end of the main story, then you won't have access to this just yet, but you will eventually. Now you have 119 19 strength, and you have a 10% critical hit rate and 25% faint damage. So very similar abilities to the Quartz Hammer Gillian. Um, just increased strength and increased critical hit rate. Now this you can get from the Port Town Marquita's shop. I don't, I still don't think I pronounced that correctly. Um, and you can get it for 890,000 Zell. So a little pricey, but I think it's pretty fair for um, what abilities you get or what traits that you can get with this kind of hammer. And these three hammers that I recommended are all non-attribute. So if I go to the Pockle Clover, you can see that there is an earth attribute equipped with it. The reason I don't want to use an attributed hammer is because we're taking away from her ability um, or her skill no attribute attack raise. If we start adding on uh, elements to her attacks then that takes away from her skills and we'll have to replace those with other elemental attack raise skills. I could be wrong about that um, so if I am feel free to correct me um, but as far as I know, I would like to play it safe and stick with the uh, no attribute weapons. Moving on to her clothes, if you do not have Rem's made uniform, then I think just about any other clothes that you have access to will be just fine. Anything with the highest defense would be very good. You can use just about anything. Uh, but I would prefer to use the ninja apparel just because you get increased movement speed and an 8% chance to evade physical attacks. One more time, I'm getting, um, I'm getting these numbers from the spreadsheet, so everything I get is just information that's provided on this spreadsheet. 
Um, and on top of these traits, you also get 10% increase in darkness attribute, and then you also get resistance to poisoned and blindness. Now this is actually very good because Rem, I think she has a 15%, not 15%, uh, she has negative 15 in her darkness resistance. Um, so using the ninja apparel would actually be very good because you're increasing her um, increasing her weakness or her resistance essentially to darkness and you can never go wrong with resistance to poisoned or blindness um, for accessories you can use just about anything that you want i'm not too picky with her accessories so i mean if you want more movement speed for her to get away from enemies because she has to be a certain distance away to use her skills then speed shoes are great if you want these uh, basic stat increases then the hidden treasure uh, I'm not gonna butcher that name if you want to use the hidden treasure then you can do that as well um, or if you want to increase um, faint or break damage then definitely use the Norlene flag but again anything works now, in terms of what you should be building, like I said, I highly, highly recommend that you increase her HP as much as possible to really maximize her ability uh, Demonize or Horn of the Demon. And again, you can, if you are on a budget, switch between attack and critical, see what works best for you. I like to mix it up and use a little bit of both for now, um, but eventually I would like to get rid of the critical um, skills so that way I can add on things like decoy. So that way if Rem ever um, dies while she's not in demon form or while she's in demon form, then I can just bring her back to life and then she'll be good to go. She's like a zombie, essentially. And I guess she's more of a zombie if you have Proud Force on. I don't have Sharp Eyes equipped, even though it's uh, it costs zero skill cost to use it um, or to equip it. And the reason I don't have it equipped is because eventually the MP that's used with sharp eyes equipped will add up all that used MP and I would much rather use that MP in demon form. Now there are some other skills that I want to use on her like life brave. This skill will increase your strength depending on how low your HP is. I have no idea what this skill is like yet but just from the sound of it it sounds like being a zombie is great. And the best way to keep your HP low or to really maximize the effect of Life Brave, I want to use a skill called Spirit Ifrit. Now, I don't have this skill unlocked just yet, but I do have the arc for it. And this arc, the Conqueror of Flames, was a limited time arc during the um, slime collaboration. That time I was reincarnated as a slime. Um, so if you do have access to this arc, I would consider using it. Um, if not, don't worry about it. It's not mandatory. Um, but the effect is your HP continuously drops, physical damage increases by 20%, and then any fire attack damage taken gets subtracted by 20%. That does not apply to fire magic damage taken. Now, I don't know how fast your HP is going to drop. I don't know if it's literally your HP dropping by the second or if it's um, your HP being reduced by uh, 10% every 10 seconds. I don't know. Um, for physical damage, I don't know if that's just basic attack or if that's um, skill damage or if that's your special damage, um, I will find out once I unlock it. And the reason I haven't unlocked it is because I don't have the souls. 
I don't have the red souls for it. Um, and I'm only one level away from unlocking it. So once I can unlock it, I will do my best to test out how those two skills work together. Life, Brave, and Spirit Ifrit. But if any of you have an idea of how you want to build RAM or any recommendations or things to consider, feel free to write that down in the comment section. Uh, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's something that I can even add to my build. Just food for thought. I'm always open to new ideas, things that I haven't come up with or even discovered yet. So... That's basically my take on REM. Let's go ahead and do just a quick demonstration of what my REM can do for now. I have taken REM into Arena. Um, she's not my biggest damage dealer, um, but she has not died in any of my Arena defense yet. Um, and I use Roland too, and Roland is usually my MVP for attack and defense in Arena. Um, so we'll see how that changes. But let's go, let's go to Darba Desert, and we're going to do God Mode. Let's do Steady March, no support. Let's give her um, an arc. I'm using Grand Bargain, which will um, increase your strength and defense in proportion to HP. So. 30% increase in strength and defense. And then we, all, we also have a very high increase in um, HP as well, if you can see from there. Um, so let's see what Rem can do. So we're going to start off in this first wave without going into demon mode, or if I'm desperate, then I'll go into demon mode. Um, but we'll start off, so I have... Over 9,000, just a little bit. Over 9,000 HP already. Um, and I'm recovering some of that due to Proud Force. So, not a bad idea to consider investing in Critical. Um, and I'm just doing basic attack just to let my skills increase. And she recovers her special very, very quickly as you can see. But of course I do have an accessory that boosts how fast I recover my special. So normally what I like to do is I attack from afar. I'll go in with my S3. Ooh, S3. Eh, her attacks can be disrupted unfortunately. But once I go in with my S3, I'll go in with S2, basic attack, and then S1 to push the enemy away. And that's normally what I do, but you can always mix it up, do whatever works for you. So now, I, I said I wasn't going to go into demon form, but I am. I lied. Um, so just like a magic skill, it does require a little bit of time to cast. And you, she can be disrupted from it as well. So just be careful of when using her abilities. So I'll use her special. And then she gets her ultimate boost skill. And that did 11,000 at its peak damage or max damage. Um, I honestly can't wait to unlock a lot of her other skills as well because then we'll see a bigger increase in all of her attack. Basic attack, skill attack, special attack. It's going to be insane. And wow, she's already recovered her special again. I'll just, I'll use it again. Probably one of the fastest units to be able to recover her special. Or at least from what I've seen so far. Um, oh, this enemy unit isn't dead yet. So I, I've, yeah, I've also discovered that after using her special, some enemies, usually, usually the enemy that I've used the special on, their HP will disappear. Um, but if I was to hit the switch target, then I'll be able to see their HP bar. Um, but the HP bar won't come back. So I don't know if that's a glitch or something. Maybe someone can let me know if that also happens with them. Um, but that's essentially all that I have for now, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you liked and enjoyed this video, or if you feel like you learned something, then consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. 
and I will see you next time. I actually forgot, but let me show you where to get those weapons that I talked about. So you can get the crazy impact in the hidden Paco Plains. That's right over here on the northwestern side of the map. And right in here, I've already purchased it, but yes, you can get it for 388,000 Zell. And then if you are looking for the ancient hammer, we can go all the way to, oh, whoops. We can go to Port Town, Marquita, I don't know how to pronounce that, but this is the southmost island and you can purchase it for 890,000 Zell.